Welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be discussing product demand and revenue. For most products, there is a relationship between the price per unit charged and the number of units sold. For instance, as the price increases, there may be a lesser demand for the product. Or, as the price decreases, the demand for the product may increase. We're going to let the price of, per unit of the product be represented by P and the number of units sold or the demand for the product be X. P will be dependent upon X. Let's look at this example. We have textbooks that are being sold. When 2400 books were sold, the price charged for a textbook was $90. Then at another time when um, the price was at $70 per book. They sold 3,000 textbooks. Let's assume that there is a linear relationship between the number of units sold, X, and the price per unit, P. Since there is a linear relationship between our variables, we can plot the two points that we have in our situation and draw a straight line through those points. So if you look at the um, information that was given. We had 2,400 books that were sold at a price of $90 each. So that gave us the ordered pair of 2,490. Then at $70, 3,000 were sold. So we have the ordered pair of 3,000 comma 70. And we drew a straight line through those two points because really all you need are two points to draw a line. Now notice that on the x-axis we have number of units sold, which is the demand for the product, and on the y-axis we have the price per unit. Okay, so let's find the slope for this linear equation. Using our two ordered pairs, we're going to use our slope formula. Normally your slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, but in this case we're using p to represent the output value. Now remember that p represents price per unit, and x represents number of units. So when you're looking at your slope, your unit of measurement is price per unit per unit. Okay, so finding our slope, we're going to find the difference between our p values, 70 minus 90, and the difference between our x values, 3000 minus 2400. So we have negative 20 over 600, or in lowest terms, negative 1 30th. So what that tells us is that for every dollar decrease in price, an additional 30 units are being demanded. Okay, now let's find our equation. So we have two ordered pairs and we have the slope. So we're going to use the um, point slope formula to find the equation for the line. So again, I'm replacing y with p. So we have p minus p1 times equals the slope times x minus x1. So plugging in for m, we have negative 1 30th, and I'm using the ordered pair of 2400 and 90. So 2400 is my x value and 90 is my y value. Then I just need to isolate p. So I'm going to distribute the negative 1 30th. So distributing negative 1 30th to x, of course we get negative 1 30th x, and then negative 1 30th times negative 2400 gives us 80. And all you have to do is bring the 90 over to the other side. So the equation for this line is negative 1 over 30x plus 170. Well, now it's in slope-intercept form. So you can see your slope of negative 1 30th, and your intercept, or your y-intercept, is 170. If the y-intercept is 170, that means that when um, the price is at $170 per unit, the demand for the product is zero. Let's find the x-intercept. So remember, you're going to find an x-intercept when your output value is zero. So we're going to replace p with zero and isolate x. So we're going to bring the negative 1 30th x over to the other side. So we have 1 over 30 x is equal to 170, and just multiply both sides by 30. So you get x is 5,100 units. So that tells us that um, if the price per unit was zero, the demand would be 5,100 units. So 5,100 units is the maximum number of units that we can expect to sell. 
All right, so now instead of having a line that goes on forever, we've limited the domain of this um, equation. The domain's going to go from the 0 to 5100. Doesn't make sense to have a negative number of textbooks. And the range is going to go from 0 to the maximum possible um, price per unit, which is at um, 170. And again, it doesn't make sense to go negative for your price per unit. So we have a range of 0 to 170. OK, now we want to talk about revenue. And revenue is just how much we make in sales based on these textbooks and at what price they're sold at. So revenue is going to be the price per unit times the number of units sold, which gives us price, which is just another way of saying revenue. So we're going to start with our price equation of negative 1 over 30x plus 170, and we're going to multiply that equation by x to get the revenue. So p times x is neg negative 1 over 30x squared plus 170x, and that's going to give us our revenue equation. Now this equation is now quadratic, so you know it's going to um, be a parabola and it's going to have a vertex or a maximum or minimum point. In this case it has a maximum point rather than a minimum point because our leading coefficient is negative and you'll see that as we move through what it looks like. Okay, So what we're going to do is find our vertex and you can always find the vertex of a parabola by using the formula x equals negative b over twice a. That's going to give us the x-coordinate of the vertex. Remember that b is the coefficient of your x term and a is the coefficient of the x squared term. So in this case our b is 170, but we're going to take the negative of b, so um, we have negative 170, and um, 2 times a, where a is negative 1 over 30. 2 times negative 1 over 30 reduces to negative 115. So now I'm just going to multiply by the reciprocal, so I have negative 170 times negative 15, which gives us 2550. So that tells us that when 2550 books are sold, we will reach the maximum revenue. But we need to also find that maximum revenue, so we're going to plug the 2550 back into the um, revenue equation and solve. So we have negative 1 30th times 2550 squared plus 170 times 2550, which gives us $216,750 in revenue. Keep in mind this is not profit, this is strictly revenue, so the income from those books not subtracting out the cost, so we haven't subtracted out the cost at all. Alright, so we have our maximum revenue, so that gives us an ordered pair actually of $2550 as our input value and $216,750 as our output. So we want to go ahead and graph our revenue function. We know where our vertex is, and we're going to find two other points on our graph. Well, since our demand function gave us a domain of 0 to 5100, we really can't um, make it any wider than that um, for the revenue function because we're already restricted by that demand function. And you'll see what happens with the revenue function um, with those points as well. So let's plug in 0 into our function. And when we do, we get out 0. So that gives us an x-intercept on our graph. Then we have our vertex. And when I plug in the 5100, I also got out 0. So those two endpoints that were on the demand function uh, of the domain are also going to be the endpoints of the domain for the revenue function. So we're going to have, go ahead and graph that. So you can see that your revenue function is spanning from 0 to 5100. Again, it doesn't make sense to go outside of quadrant 1 because you don't want to have a negative number of units sold or a negative revenue. So we're again restricting it to quadrant 1 so our domain is going to be from 0 to 5100. Okay, and we also have our vertex plotted at the top up there so you can see how high the graph goes. And that means that the range for the revenue function is going to go from 0 to 216,750. Okay, now let's find the price that we should charge so that we get our maximum 
amount of revenue, which means that we want our demand to be 2550 or our x value to be 2550. So let's plug that into our price per unit equation and solve for P. So I get 85 um, is the price that we should charge for this product so that we can reach our maximum revenue. Think about it this way. If we charge $85 per book and we expect to sell 2,550 books, then all we would do is multiply 85 by the 2,550 and that gives us our 216,750, which is the expected maximum revenue. So that should be our goal price. Okay, thank you for tuning in to Demystifying Math.